Okay, today we're going to dive into day two of the Pythagorean Theorem. Yesterday we learned all about the parts of the triangle, um, and today we're going to learn what the Pythagorean Theorem is and how to solve for the hypotenuse of a right triangle. The Pythagorean Theorem is kind of what we dove, dove into um, on, um, let's see, what was Tuesday, when we did the, the project with the graph paper, and we drew through squares that came out like this. Let's see if I can do it. And then we drew a square that came down like this. And what we found is if we found the area of this one and the area of this one, when we added those two up, it gave us the area of this one. Okay? Um, before we can go too far, um, and so what we found is that if this is side A, in our square being A and A, to find the area of that, we would take A times A, which is A squared. Here, this side length is B, so we know that's B and that's B. To find the area of this one, it would be B times B, which again would give us B squared. We found out if you added A squared and B squared, that it gave us this one, which was C squared, which would be C times A and this would come out, it would be C, which would again be C squared. This is your Pythagorean theorem. Okay? So as I kind of showed you with this, our Pythagorean theorem is when you take the square of your shortest leg plus the square of your longer leg, that will always equal the square of your hypotenuse. Okay? Let's look at our first example. This would be our A. This would be our B. We're going to plug it into our formula. Make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to get 6 to the second power plus 8 to the second power. And we're going to find that equals C to the second power. C, 6 to the second power is 36. 8 to the second power is 64. And that equals six, or C squared. When we add these two together, what we found out was that it equaled 100. And that equals, again, C squared. This is where we kind of run into a, a problem. Because we need to know what C is. The advantage to this Pythagorean theorem is to give us, to be able to use this theorem to find a, or solve for a missing side. Okay, so if we know two of the three sides, we can use this a squared plus b squared equals c squared to be able to find the missing one. We know that this side is 6, this side is 8. We're going to try to use it to find our hypotenuse. Every question that we do today will try to help us find this hypotenuse. Okay? Right now we're close. We know that if we took this hypotenuse and squared it, we would get 100. We don't need, we don't, however, we don't want it to be squared. We want to know what is just C. And so in order to get C by itself, we're going to actually take the square root of both sides. The square root of C squared will give us C, which is what we want. We want just C, not C squared. The square root of 100, we have to ask ourselves what number times itself gives us 100. We would say 10. So we pull 1 out, and we find out that 10 equals C, or C equals 10. The measure of the hypotenuse is 10. Let's look at another example. This one, the numbers are a little bit bigger, so we might have to use a calculator to help us. But here's our A, here's our B, and we're going to try to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared to find our C. Plug it in, 20 squared plus 48 squared. And that will equal C squared. Well, 20 squared gives us 400. 48 squared, and I'm going to have to use a calculator for this one, gives us 2,304. And that equals C squared. When we add these two together, we get 2,704. Now we're going to use our calculator to find the square root of both sides. 
because we don't want c squared, we simply want c, the square root of 2704 gives us 52. So we know that c equals 52. What about if they use words? They give us that A equals 7, B equals 24, and C equals, or we're trying to find out what C equals. Here's our right triangle. We know A is 7, B is 24, we're trying to find C. So if it helps, draw your picture. Plug in 7 squared plus 24 squared, because that's what B is, and that will equal C squared. 7 times 7 is 49. 24 squared, or 24 times 24, gives us 576. And that equals C squared. We add the two together, and we get 625. And now we take the square root of 625. And the reason why is we want to do the square root of both sides. So that we're left with just C, and we get 25. So C equals 25. Okay. This is our last problem. I want you to go ahead and try this one on your own, and we'll talk about it tomorrow in class. Remember, here's your A, here's your B, and notice that it does have units of measure. They're they're meters. Okay. And so whatever you get, your C equals, it's going to be some number, and don't forget to put meters. Okay? Good luck.